from here now, I think I'd like to slide into Ariescan as a, something to show as well. Mm -hmm. As this seems to be, uh, this is at the point where I would then click go and we would be able to collect this tile region. But in interest of time, let's move on. So maybe, actually, yeah, I'm going to keep this because I don't need to get rid of it. So I'll keep that. So uh, as with initially setting up the LSM, setting up smart setup, um, setting up Ariescan in smart setup is also generally the quickest way to get things going. So here we have the uh, triangle that basically gives you an idea of what kind of area scan you're going to use. So um, even if you don't know the difference between all the different types of area scan, you can look at this triangle and make a rough estimation of the kind of mode you're going to want, even if you don't know exactly what it's going to do. Even if And if you do know the names, then you can just tab over each section and you can see exactly which one you're going to get by clicking on the button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Multiplex SR4Y because this is a really nice balance between good resolution and good speed. Um, I now have my dies that I've previously used present, so I don't need to change anything there. And I'm happy with the smartest. I think we'll probably still get good results, so I'll accept that. And there we go. So, so now the system's been set up for Ariescan. So things will have changed a little bit, but by and large, not much. So the acquisition mode looks mostly the same, and by and large it is, except for this change here where I, my sampling has now become uh, slightly different. So here it is now assumed that you'll be operating either between one and two times sampling. So with the SR modes, it's assumed that obviously you need to, you'll want to sa sample uh, at times two to be able to get, your, well, to be able to display your doubling in resolution. If you want to run it in confocal mode, so run it at one time sampling, then that means you can just run it much quicker and you'll benefit from the sensitivity, but not so much from the improvement in resolution. Now, because I'm in like a re because I'm in a not particularly high resolution objective, um, my image size is quite large and it means my frame size is very large. So I'm collecting 4K by 4K pixels. So it's quite a big image. And with two colors, this means when I run it at maximum speed, I'm doing about five seconds for both the both the frames. But this is still pretty quick. And actually, one of the advantages of Aerie Scan is the fact that you can run it at a fast frame rate because of the improved sensitivity due to the way it works. So where is my field of view? OK, it's over there. Well, let's go and have a look at some of these guys that we we were nearby. And if I now run my live, again, it will. this will just be a rough way to find my focus. So I just want to see where I am and what I'll be able to see. So that's a nice way to see. And then from here, what I can do is I can run a continuous scan. And now again, I'll be able to see more of what the actual image, if I was to take one, would look like. So this is not necessarily completely true for Aerie Scan because this is still raw data. So it doesn't display what the, um, the final Aerie Scan processed image would look like. So if I take a snap here, we can actually collect one and see what it would look like in the end. Do, 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 do. It is running the snap in the background, and there we go. And it's providing, and there we go. It's done a little bit of a pre-processed image to give us an idea of what this would look like. So I think it looks fine, and it was collected pretty quickly. But there's something that I've neglected to point out that I, is worthwhile now mentioning, is that we can see down here there's a little um, little red hex set of hexagons with a little exclamation mark on it. And then when you tab over it, it says, the alignment has failed. Now, all this means is that the Aerie scan hasn't had time to actually align itself while it was being used. So the Aerie scan will happily align itself in the background when you're using it. When you're using live and continuous scans, it will actively be scanning to align itself in the background. Now, when I normally use the Aerie scan, I'm usually just keeping one eye on what this is doing. And once it's gone green, I know I'm happy to go. Just because I was able to find an area I'm going to image quite quickly, um, it didn't have quite the time to actually align. So. What I'll do now is I will run it in live and I'll allow the red to just align on its own. So there are a few things that affect how quickly the system can align. So the speed of scanning improves it and whether the system is too bright or not bright enough also affects it. So here we can see once I started scanning very quickly, we've aligned very easily. So if I turn it back over to continuous, this will then allow both channels to align. But because they're both visible lines, this will actually mean that we're basically already aligned anyway. So once this finishes one scan, we'll actually see where we're at. And here we can see that on the Beery scan detector for both channels, we're aligned, which means now when we collect an image, we can be sure that we're getting the best Beery scan image. May I ask a question? Yes, of course. What do you mean align Beery scan? So the 
um, basically the optics that are projecting the beam onto the Aries scan detector are obviously very fine, finely tuned optics. And in, ideally, you need to make sure that the center of intensity, so the middle of the area that you're collecting uh, the point spread function that you're projecting onto your scan detector needs to be well aligned with the detector itself to give the best results, essentially. So how many axes of freedom do you have? That's a good question, actually. So um, typically, we just use X and Y as positions. Now, there, there is the ability to change it in Z, but this is mostly used, actually, for the difference in different objectives. So when you change different objectives, you need to account for the fact that they have different NAs and different... Um, uh, magnifications and this means you need to change to make sure you project the beam properly across the entire array but once you've actually done that and this is all tuned by your service engineer the xy positioning is the main bit that's important the rest of it is fine so you don't need any kind of xy um, tilt or anything like that it is purely then just a case of xy position so we is we assume certain the lines are parallel yes yes it's all that is all organized by your service engineer. They'll be the one who makes sure that's fine. So we're, we're done there now and we can collect an image. Now, what I know will likely happen is we will not see huge differences between what was previously not aligned and what is now aligned. And the reason is it was probably very close to start with and we just were close by. What is often a major difference is the you'll see intensity jump as the IRI scan aligns itself better but it obviously will also improve the actual outcome of the proper image as well. If you are struggling to actually align the system or if you if you if it's struggling to align itself, scanning in live will always help it because we'll be able to uh, you'll be it'll have the use my words, it will be able to have more changes quickly. So every frame it has an opportunity to try and move itself. So if you're taking frames quickly, it has an opportunity to try and rectify itself. Um, and if your sample is not very bright, then it's worthwhile moving to a slightly brighter area just to allow it to align. Or if the sample is too bright, you definitely need to drop your illumination down so that it can work properly. Um, and finally, if you're doing it in situations where you don't have particularly bright cells, so in situations where you maybe have low abundance proteins or have live cells where they're just not, the reporters aren't very bright, it's then worthwhile using the confocal modes instead of the super resolution modes because you get better sensitivity out of the confocal modes. And these will generally manage better aligning themselves than the super resolution modes. And once this is aligned, you can just go back to the super resolution modes and carry on as you were. Um, okay, we're in my two. What have I shown? Um, yeah, I think that's a whistle stop tour of it all, really. Do you have questions, Vladimir? Do you have thoughts, things I have not mentioned, perhaps? Um, I'm thinking how to optimize our training so you can go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe if you can show a little bit about post-processing, what we can do. Yeah. At least mechanism, how we open close. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Uh, it's worthwhile me showing the processing because I've talked about collecting an image, but I've definitely not mentioned anything about actually doing anything with it yet. Okay, so here's a couple of the Aeriscan images that I've collected. So we've got this one here. That was the final one that I took with the actually aligned data. And what you notice is, for those of you who had uh, BDIs, there was a little processing step that happened in the corner. And what this is doing is, this is the Aeriscan pre-processing, just showing you, mm -hmm. excuse me, what the... Um, the image could look like if it's processed. It's not showing you exactly what you'll get at the end, but if you go to the Aerie Scan tab here, what it will offer you is the ability to create this as an image. So at the moment, it's still raw data, but if you click Create Processed Image, this will become a processed image. Now, you haven't had much control over what's been done there, but what you can do is turn the auto filtering off and you can control it here if you want. And as you can see, as I change this value, it starts to work again, uh, it starts to change again. So this image has now changed and I can really push it so that it completely <laughs> um, becomes a big mess, or I can drop it right back down so that it becomes very, very soft. Now, one thing that is useful about this auto filter, if I put it back to the actual value that it was, which I think was about 3.9, is that this is a good example of a rough place to start. So if you haven't collected any super resolution data with your Aerie scan, and you're just about to start, and you're like, you're wondering how are you going to decide what your value is going to be, this is a good starting point. This is a, this image has been analyzed by the um, by Zen, and this is what the the Zen has decided would be a reasonable value to give it. 
So now when we go into processing, we can obviously have go into um, Erie scan processing. So we go into methods, if you search Erie scan processing, then you can use it. And in here we have all our settings. So initially, if you're if you're imaging and you, mostly what you care about is the spatial organization of the things you're looking at, and you don't want to have to be able to quantify um, intensities, auto filters fine. You're able to pick them between low, standard, and high, and this is essentially the strength of the Wiener filter that is the final step in the Aries scan processing. So low being a low Wiener filter, high being a high Wiener filter. Um, these are not given specific values because it depends on the signal to noise and the image quality that's present within the image that it's about to analyze. So these values vary. Now that's an important point because if you are going to start to do quantitative imaging where you want all your images to be completely comparable and you don't just care about spatial organization but you need intensity correlations, then you can turn the auto filtering off and you can then adjust per channel and you can select your values here. Now, the reason why I mentioned that this value is a good value to start is because here, this value starts just as six. This is just the center of the, the values that can be used for the Wiener filter. It's not a suggestion, it's just the middle. So this is a good place to start if you're interested. You can always reprocess data, and I would always suggest that you use adjust per channel to make sure that your um, it is channel specific, because as you would expect, your intensities within your channels are very unlikely to be of similar levels and your signal to noise is also very unlikely to be the same. So you need to consider that when you're doing it. But once you've done this and you've adjusted per channel, so if, for instance, if I estimate that this will be about, I don't know, 3.8, maybe I make this a little bit lower. So I say I go to 3.3 and now I click apply. What will happen is the area scan processing will occur. So we'll see that happening in the background. And now I'll have generated a area scan processing a processed image. And then we can move in a little bit and see how this looks. So I've not really optimized it. So it's certainly not the um, the most stunning image I've ever taken, but it's a quick way to see exactly how you go through the process of doing this.